Hi guys and welcome to the third video looking at revision for the explanations and formula unit of National 5. So this is the, th the third video in the series and in this video we're going to be looking at volume and algebraic fractions. So as before what I suggest you do is pause the video before each question and have a go at them before I talk you through the questions. So the first one we're looking at here is to find the volume of a cube or a cuboid. This is not one of the formula that's given to you, so you need to remember this. So you should remember that the volume is length times breadth times height. This shape we have here is clearly a cube because it has three dimensions that are five centimetres. So we simply substitute them into the formula. So five times five times five. That gives you your final volume of 125 cubic centimetres remembering your units on the end. The second example is a prism. Now you are given the formula for this on your formula sheet, so there's no need to remember it. The formula is B equals AH, where A is the area of the cross section. Now you can clearly see the cross section of this prism is a hexagon, and it has an area of 45 square centimetres. So all we need to do here is to substitute this into the formula. So we have 45 multiplied by the height of 20. So that gives us a total volume of 900 cubic centimetres. Nice and straightforward. Okay, now we're on to some different shapes. So we're now looking at the cylinder and the cone. Fortunately, you're given the formula for the cone on the formula sheet. Unfortunately, however, you are not given the cylinder, so this is one that you have to remember. So the formula for the cylinder is V equals pi r squared h, where r is the radius and h is the height. So in the diagram here you can see that the diameter of the base is 8 centimetres, so first of all you need to identify what the radius is. So if the diameter is 8, that means that the radius is going to be half of that, which is 4. Now this is the length that you will have to use for your formula. So substituting into the formula, we have pi times 4 squared times the height of 12. This gives us a volume of 603.185 and so on. We don't want a decimal value like this, we want to try and round it up. So let's round this up to three significant figures. So that's going to round to 603 cubic centimetres to three significant figures. Okay, the next shape is a cone. This is one of the formula you are given. So from the formula sheet, you should be pulling off that the volume of a cone is a third pi r squared h. There's a third of the size of the cylinder that would surround it. Again, you need to identify the radius. And in this example, again, you're given diameter. So the radius needs to be half of that, so 1.5 centimetres. And your height of 5. Again, plug it into the formula. So we have a third times pi times 1.5 squared times 5. And following through this calculation, your volume will come out to give you 11.7809 and so on. Again, we've got a decimal value, so we'll need to round it. Let's go for three significant figures again. So that will round up to give you 11.8 cubic centimetres to three significant figures. Here are the last two volume questions. So we're now looking at a pyramid and a sphere. Now both of these are given to you on your formula sheet. So for your pyramid, you're given the formula V equals a third AH. Where again, A is the area of the cross section or the area of the base. So we're dealing with a square base pyramid here. You'll see you've got two dimensions shown to you have a length and a breadth of 12. So that gives you the clue that it's a square base pyramid. Again, you need to identify the height, and the height in this case is 25 metres. So again, substitute into the formula. So we have a third times the area. Well, the area of the base 
is given by length times breadth, or 12 times 12. Times by the height, or 25. And working this calculation through, that will give you a volume of 1,200 cubic metres. And similarly for the sphere, again you're given this formula on your formula sheet. So V equals 4 thirds pi r cubed this time. So all we need to identify is the radius. It's clearly given to you as a radius of 3. So we have 4 thirds times pi times 3 cubed. And again following through this calculation, we get 113.097 and so on. Again, we'll round it to three significant figures at the end. So we have 113 cubic centimetres. So that brings us to the end of the volume questions. Now we're on to algebraic fractions. So when it comes to algebraic fractions, you're expected to be able to simplify algebraic fractions and express algebraic fractions as a single fraction using the four operations. So the first one we have here is 4xy squared plus 8xy over y plus 2. Now remember to factorise, we need to be looking for common factors, then difference of two squares and then trinomials. So these are the things that we should be looking to identify so that we can divide both the numerator and the denominator by a factor. If you look at the numerator, you've got 4xy squared plus 8xy, but it's quite clear that there's a common factor in there. There's a common factor of 4, first of all, but there's also an x and there's also a y. So let's take all of that out. To get back to what we started with, we have to multiply 4xy by y and 4xy by 2. That's still all divided by y plus 2. Now you can see here that there's a factor on the numerator and the denominator that will cancel. You have this y plus 2. So if we divide both by y plus 2, we're simply going to be left with 4xy. And that would be your final answer. To express a fraction as a single fraction, we need to be looking at how we get a common denominator. Okay, so we need to remember the kiss and smile method. So we need a common denominator, which means to multiply the two denominators together. But if we multiply one denominator by the other, we also need to do the same to the numerators. So that's where the kiss and smile comes from. So we cross multiply and then multiply the denominators. So if we have four lots of x plus one, minus three lots of x minus one, that becomes our numerator. On the, de the denominator, we have x minus 1 times x plus 1. Now we need to do a wee bit of tidying up here, so expand out the brackets. That would give us a 4x plus 4 minus 3x plus 3, watching that double negative. Still all over x minus 1, x plus 1. Again, tidy up the numerator by collecting up like terms. So we're left with an x from the 4x minus 3x and a plus 7 all over x minus 1, x plus 1. There's nothing else there that we can simplify, so that is our final answer. So I hope that's helped you with these two topics. Again, go away and practice some of these questions, looking at past paper questions, in order to help you with preparation for the exams. The next video we're going to look at, um, this is on arcs and sectors, and that's video number four.